Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Brittany Lung. This past weekend saw 15 drivers in action, so let's get started by checking in on our Race Face Drivers. Sheldon Creed continued his impressive streak of top 10 finishes this weekend at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the Gander Outdoor Truck Series. Sheldon qualified six, but battled a tight handling truck all night. The GMS team gambled on a late caution, taking on fuel only, and that paid off with a fourth place finish. That's five in a row inside the top six. Up next for Sheldon, Talladega Super Speedway on October 12th. Anthony Alfredo was at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the second time this weekend, competing in the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series, sporting some new partners. Sim seats and eye racing on his number 15 DGR Toyota Tundra. Anthony qualified 15th, ran in the top most of the race, but got shuffled back on a late race restart, resulting in a 12th place finish. Up next for Anthony, Talladega Super Speedway on October 12th. Sam Mayer was back in the ARCA Racing Series this weekend at Salem Speedway where he qualified second and brought home a fifth place finish in his number 21 GMS Chevrolet. That's five top five finishes in six ARCA starts this year. Up next for Sam NASCAR k and Pro Series at New Hampshire Motor Speedway on September 21st. Jesse Love was back in the Midwest for two nights of racing in the Power Eye National Midget Series. On Friday night, he was at the famed Belclair Speedway, where he finished fourth in his heat after starting eighth. In the A main, he started sixth and was going for fourth, but the slide job did not go as planned and ended his night. On Saturday, the KKM team was at Macon Speedway, known as the fastest one-fifth mile dirt track in the country, where he finished fourth in his heat race, had to start 15th in the 30 lap feature. On lap one, two cars spun in front of Jesse and he had nowhere to go and got caught up in their mess and had to restart 22nd, but raced his way back up to a 13th place finish. Up next for Jesse, a repeat of this weekend, Belle Claire on the 20th and Macon on the 21st. Brian Henderson was at Laguna Seca Raceway for the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge on the 11 turn 2.2 mile road course featuring the famous corkscrew. Brian qualified seventh for the two hour race on Saturday, ran as high as fourth and brought home a fifth place finish in his Atlanta Superworks Friends of Jacqueline Honda. Up next for Brian IMSA series at Road Atlanta, October 11th. Connor Mosack returned to Hickory Motor Speedway for the final night of racing in the NASCAR Wheelin All-American Series Night of Champions. He qualified his number 18 Nick Taylor Interstate Foam Friends of Jacqueline Chevrolet in seventh and finished fifth. Up next for Connor, the fall brawl at Hickory Motor Speedway on October 19th. Joe Valento picked up a heat race win this weekend at Jefferson Speedway in his Friends of Jacqueline Ardent Mills Nitro Lubricant Chevrolet after qualifying sixth. Joe started the feature in seventh and finished ninth in what turned out to be a one groove racetrack, making it very hard to pass. Up next for Joe, Midwest Trucks at Lacrosse International Speedway on October 5th. Joey East was back in his focus midgets at Madeira Speedway for two nights of racing in the Harvest Classic. On Friday, Joey led 22 of 25 laps and parked it in Victory Lane. On Saturday, he led 25 of 30 laps, sweeping the race weekend with another win. Joey has six wins and six starts this year in the Focus Midget. Up next for Joey, junior late model at Madeira Speedway on September 21st. Mini Tyrell was not in the race car this past weekend, but that didn't keep him from winning off the track. Mini was the recipient of the first inaugural Kirk IPOC Solid Rock Carriers Affect the Moment Award at the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation Gala in Poughkeepsie, New York. Congratulations, Minnie. Now let's check in on the Race Face Next drivers. Jake Bullman pulled double duty this weekend, first at Madeira Speedway in the Harvest Classic Pro Late Model Race. Jake brought home an impressive third place finish in his first ever Pro Late Model start. On Saturday, Jake was back in his INEX legend for a combined race at Irwindale Speedway, where he took the checkers for the win. Up next for Jake this weekend at Madeira Speedway in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Bryce Bazanson was at Evergreen Speedway on Saturday in his Friends of Jacqueline CrowdStrike Super Late Model, where he brought home another top 10 finish in seventh place. Bryce also wrapped up the Track Rookie of the Year honors. 
Congratulations, Bryce. Up next for Bryce, Wenatchee Valley Super Oval on September 21st. Cassidy Hines was back in her 600 micro sprint at El Paso County Raceway, where she finished second in her heat and started sixth in the feature. Cassidy got caught up in someone else's mess and suffered significant damage, including a bent axle, bent wheel, hole in her wing, and broken Jacob's ladder. Done for the night, right? Wrong. She restarted 18th and raced her way to a ninth place finish. Now that's impressive. Up next for Cassidy, 600 micro sprints at El Paso County Raceway on September 28th. Colby Sokol had an awesome weekend in his now 600 winged micro sprint at El Paso County Raceway, where he picked up another heat race win and then brought home a second place finish in the A-Main. Colby also turned 13 on Sunday. Happy birthday, Smoke. Up next for Colby back at El Paso County for championship race on September 28th. Justice Sokol was at El Paso County Raceway in his 600 restricted micro sprint. He finished third in his heat and scored a top 10 in the feature with a 10th place finish. This young racer is running with the non-restricted cars, but everyone better watch out. When he gets some more power, you'll find out why they call him the lawman. Up next for Justice, El Paso County Raceway on September 28th. Grant Thompson had a busy weekend starting at Madeira Speedway where he tested on Thursday and raced in the Pro Late Model Club race on Friday. He qualified fifth but started 18th due to this being his first time in a late model. The race plan was to run all the laps and earn some respect from the drivers and the promoter, and that's exactly what he did. Grant will return to Madeira on October 5th to compete in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series televised race on MAV TV. On Saturday, Grant flew back to compete at the Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida in his pro truck. Grant qualified fourth for the 50 lap feature. Unfortunately, Grant knew from the drop of the green flag that something wasn't right and that condition worsened and the rear end eventually failed, ending his night. We would like to welcome our newest Race Face Next driver, Haley Constance, who was at Evergreen Speedway in the Youth Hornets, where she qualified P1, won her heat race, then finished the A-Main in sixth place. Up next for Haley, micro sprints on September 20th and 21st at Plaza Park Raceway for the Mark Hagopian Memorial. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Race Face Spotlight on Thursdays at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, this week featuring Midwest Truck Series driver Joe Valento. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We will be back with you next week for more from your favorite Race Face drivers. So get out there, have a great race week. I'm Brittany Lung, thanks for watching.